I'm standing at the front of my newly acquired 1980 Mercedes 300D. This is a diesel. And these are the cars, folks, that have been known to go a million miles. That's right, a million miles. You may see that in ads like on Craigslist or on eBay. Yeah, man, this diesel will go a million miles. Now, I'm not going to disagree that this car wouldn't go a million miles. But I think when people hear that, it does a disservice to the owners because I think owners think, well, if it's going to go a million miles, why bother to do anything to it? They'll go a million miles, folks, but you have to maintain them. And what I want to share with you is three ways that you can kill one of these diesel engines slowly. You know, you probably know a couple of ways to kill it rapidly, but killing it slowly, well, this can kind of sneak up on you. I know that this may come as a surprise to some of you, particularly you diesel owners, that I would choose this right here as the number two best way to kill your diesel engine slowly. And that's lack of air filter changes and air filter housing maintenance. I'm not just talking about the filter, I'm talking about the housing. And I'm gonna show you why, okay? So let's take a look at this 300D. This is a non-turbo. And you look around and you see, oh, it has a new alternator. It has a modern climate control. Battery doesn't look too bad. Looks like the car has been basically maintained. But let's see how the air filter fares in this one. Right away, I notice there's no wing nut. Now, that's bad. Okay, you can say, well, what's so bad about that? Well, let's find out how bad that is. The clips are on, but I'm also noticing that this is loose. And I pulled this off earlier to check this, and that's a little sloppy there too, but I'm just gonna pop these clips off, we'll pull this out of the way, and let's take a look. Maybe we'll see a nice brand new air filler in here. <laughs> oh my word, can you believe this? Look at this. Look at that. That could possibly be the worst one I've ever seen. And look here. You can see dirt has been going right over the top of this air filter. And look at the inside of the housing here. Look at all this junk. <laughs> Do I need to say more as to why something like this would kill your diesel engine slowly? Because you've got all kinds of dirt and crud that's being sucked into the intake and going right down to where the piston rings, which I keep harping on and harping on as this is the number one cause of the early death of these diesel engines. So you'll have to admit, everybody can clap and say, you're right, Kent, that could be the worst I've seen. I'm not even sure if this is the proper air filler because it does not look like it's been sealing around the top. But not only is this an issue, lacking a wing nut and the filter totally plugged, but let's take a look at the top here. It's missing a grommet, and this grommet is worn out. So air is being pulled in through these holes, also adding to the amount of dirt and junk that's getting into the engine. So please, folks, if you want your diesel to go a million miles, you've got to take care of your air filter and your air filter housing to make sure that the air is being perfectly filtered all the time. And you can see, look at this. This is a real concern with a restriction. You know, you probably so dirty, you might get dirt through there, but that's not the real issue there. Once again, dirt, grime, and sand getting into the intake and going into the combustion chambers is a big key to premature wear on the piston rings and the cylinder walls. And that, of course, means early death for these diesels. Now, not only is this filter real dirty, there was no wing nut, and you can see that dirt was leaking by this top lip here. See that? The dirt was actually going by there because the wing nut is designed to hold the lid tight down on this inner seal on the filter. And I'm not even sure if that is the correct filter. We're gonna compare this with them genuine German filter, but I've seen a problem with the aftermarket filters. They don't fit tight to the lid. But once again, look at this. Look at the amount of dirt and crud down in here. and even feels gritty. So <laughs> you see why I'm saying that number two is the air filter and the air filter housing maintenance. You know, look at the lid again here. Look at this. You see, without a grommet there and that hose fitting tight, you've got dirt going directly into this hole and both these holes, the holes for the breather and the holes for that vacuum tube, are not filtered. They go right into the inboard side of the filter and right down into the engine. So <laughs> what can I say, folks? 
you want to kill a diesel engine, just ignore your air filter and your air filter housing. Not only was that the dirtiest air filter I've ever seen, but this is the dirtiest air cleaner I've ever had to clean. I mean, this took over an hour to clean this. It was so full of dirt and grit, you could turn this, you could feel the grit in here. I kept having to blow it out and rinse it. And so it was obvious I couldn't do this on the car. And it's probably a good thing that I removed it anyway, because you always want to check these rubber air filter mounts because when these become loose the air filter housing will jump you know either on a non-turbo turbo you might have a problem with the elbow but let me tell you you do not want any air sneaking by any passage without it being filtered remember these diesels are hungry for air they are really sucking air so any little crack or any little break in that important filtration is going to mean early death for this engine. I don't think this engine is going to go a million miles. It'll be kind of interesting when I get around to do a compression test just how much it suffered from getting dirt and sand down in the cylinder walls. The other thing is when I took this off, I should have shot a picture, but this is, was all oily and dirty. And so it became obvious that the lower seal on the air filter housing wasn't sealing properly. It's loose. See that? So air was sucking up and through here too. <laughs> So what I had to do was I had to replace that seal and now I'm going to go ahead and install this back on the engine. You can see how tightly it fits now. We're going to line up those rubber mounts. Now see when I push down you can feel it seat into that intake manifold. I'm going to go ahead and use locking nuts because you don't want this loosening up. As soon as I get that tight I'm going to come back and show you a couple other things I found with the lid for the air filter housing. All right, let me show you the lid here. I put a new seal on here, a new seal on here. This seal was coming off. I didn't have a new one of these, but I used contact cement and re-glued this on this lip here. So now I think I've got this thing all sealed up and we're ready to install the new filter. Sure enough, as I suspected, this filter that I pulled out is really not the right thickness. If you look closely, look at the difference. This is a Molle filter and you can see there's considerable difference in thickness it isn't just the fact that this one's old. And I've seen this before. Do not buy filters from the local auto parts store for your Mercedes diesel engines. I think you can see now, if you really want to protect your Mercedes diesel engine, it's got to be more than just changing filters. You've really got to keep an eye on the air filter housing and the potential for any leaks that are allowing air to get by the filter and right into the engine. But I think we got this one sealed up. We're ready to install the filter. I'm going to drop this down. This is how you can tell if the filter's right. If I push on this, already hitting in here before I do the clamps. So you want to install the wing nut first. And tighten this wing nut down before you hook the clamps. Now you can see that's really sealed on that outer <laughs> seal lip on the air filler. Now I can drop the clamps down. Remember, this seal is more important than the outer seal. Okay, and I went ahead and installed a new breather tube, too, because these things get old and hard. This is really important, particularly if you have the OM617 turbo diesel engine. You know, this is with that old, famous Mercedes diesel engine. But there are some problems, and they're related to the right side of the engine. And the only way you can inspect that area is to remove the air filter housing. 
This is typical of the air filter housings that were mounted on the engine from 1978 to 1984 in the U.S. market. Air intake leaks in the system, which will allow dirt and dust to get into the combustion chambers. Now, any dirt or dust that gets in there is going to get on the cylinder walls, and that up and down motion at very high speed is going to wear the rings and score the cylinder walls. I, I tell you, you, you might think, oh, he's making too big a deal out about this. I've opened up enough of these diesel engines where the whole engine is in pretty good condition except the cylinder walls in the piston rings. So you need to make very sure that there are no air leaks in and around the air filter housing and this part right here. Now you may think, well, I've got a brand new filter, so I'm not gonna have any problem. Not so. <laughs> you can't believe how many air filter housings I've pulled off these engines only to find that the two seals, particularly one seal, this is a top seal, has been pushed back and the clamp was tightened down and guess what? There is no protection, there is no seal. So you have air being sucked in right through this edge of the housing here. Now take a look, here's what happens. This is because of the design of the seal itself. It's very hard to put the seal on and push this on without the seal getting pushed back. And look at how the seal on the bottom has been pushed back. Once again, I would say in more than 70% of the elbows that I pull off these engines, this top seal has been pushed back. And the bottom seal, because of the heat from the turbo gets really hard. It gets super hard, and I'm gonna show you that here in a second, and it won't seal either. So because of the compressor of the turbocharger, it's sucking a lot of air. And with the restriction of the air filler, if there's any leaks in and around this elbow, guess what? Unfiltered air is getting sucked right into the turbocharger, and it's going right into the intake manifold and into the combustion chambers. So this is something right here that a lot of people don't realize how important this is. And you need to look at this. If you've got one of these and you've never taken this off and looked at it, you need to look at these seals right here. You need to take a good close look at the breather fittings, all the breather fittings from the valve cover into the air filter housing need to be tight and soft. And if not, you need to fix this. Don't drive the car until this is fixed. Now this is a very poor design, this lip right here, and I have a video on my website which will show you how to modify this intake elbow so that when you take the air filter housing on and off and this clamp this down, you are not going to push this top seal back. Now we have brand new seals on my website and I'm going to show you now just how bad that seal is where it connects to the turbo inlet. Take a look at this lower seal. This is the one that clamps onto the compressor housing inlet. Most of the time, this seal will come right off when you pull the intake elbow off. But look, it's frozen. It's literally stuck. It's so hard, you can't even indent it when you push on it with a fingernail. So I'm going to have to take a, a pry tool. and Let's see if we can slide this, this off. Yeah, there, there it comes. Look at that. There it is. Look at how hard that is. Maybe if I squeeze it, it'll just break. Yeah, see that? And that, once again, illustrates the importance of plastic and rubber parts needing to be replaced after 25 years. So let me show you what these new seals look like. We do carry these on our website. This is the one. Look at how pliable that is. And that will allow good clamping down tight so you get no air intake leaks. And here's that troublesome top seal with this groove and it's the problem with this groove that makes it so hard to slip on without getting pushed back into that upper part of the elbow so be sure and check out my website for this video on how to modify the elbow i'll put a link below in the description of this video now i just want you to know that i have all these parts available on my website to take care of your diesel to restore your air filter housing and to replace your air filters with quality german spec filters